Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. And we got a special guest in the building today. That's right. Uh, I don't want to say your name wrong, so I'll say, uh, is it Benny Safdie? That's pretty close. What is it? It's Safdie. Safdie. Yeah. Benny Safdie. Safdie. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Film director, screenwriter, actor, and editor. Welcome. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Benny's done quite a few films. I'm mm-hmm. sure y'all have seen Uncut Gems. With Adam you know? Sandler. Yeah. That's right. And he stars in uh, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. That's right. As as, as Herb, Margaret's father. Oh. Yeah. That's I I must, I must, I must increase my bus. <laughs> yes. That yes. Is, that's that's, that's, that's that, that movie. Yes, yes. Okay. And then it's, it's you and your brother, right, Josh? Y'all, yeah, yeah. Y'all write together? Yeah, or? no, well, yeah, we'll, we'll direct and write together, so. How did, how did y'all get into Hollywood? Um, It's it's funny, because, like, um, I originally was going to be a physicist. You know, I was, wow. I was super into physics, like elementary particle physics and... Uh, I don't know, there was something about it that was very intriguing to me. And what I realized, there was I had a teacher who he wrote on this paper that I had written. He's like, you're starting at A, and we got to get to Z. And then he did all these crazy scribbles on the paper. He goes, if you can walk me from A to Z, it doesn't matter how crazy the path is. I follow the story, and it's great. And it was after that that I realized, oh, okay, maybe I like the storytelling aspect of the physics, more than I like the actual like science of it, even though I like both at the same time. And at that time, we both were getting more interested in film and all that stuff. And then Buster Keaton, I saw there was a connection. So it was just kind of from there, it it kind of clicked a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then you know you just make stuff when you can, you know. And I think I saw some early movies from the like the Italian neorealists where they were making movies about their own emotions and feelings. And they were small, you mm-hmm. know, and I was like, oh, you can just make movies about your own feelings and experiences. And that's kind of where it all started. And, and I like y'all because y'all keep it New York for the most part. It yes. seems like everybody wants to run to L.A. How come y'all never? Well, it's it's funny because it's like I whenever I'm out in L.A., I kind of have a strange experience because when you're in the city, the moment you walk out your door, you experience a million people's lives mm-hmm. just by seeing their faces and everything. And especially like everybody thinks that New York is this kind of, they ha- it has a specific thing, but if there is something, you know, everybody kind of bands together mm-hmm. in a way that doesn't happen everywhere else. There is this kind of collective push and drive, and I can't leave that. Right, you know, right, there's right, something right. about it. Like I always, uh, my wife always jokes with me, whenever anybody's stuck in the snow, which now there's not any snow, but whenever God, there's, this year, yeah. yeah, whenever there's snow, one snowstorm, I think, yeah, it, barely, it was like mm-hmm. nothing. But when you're stuck in the snow, everybody bands together, pushes the car out, and then just goes on their way. Correct, you know, it's the best. That's mm-hmm. strange. I've never thought about that. As big as New York is, with all of these millions of people, there is a connective tissue for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, regardless of what race you are, like gender, is only certain times. Like like when he said snow, yeah. snow time, yes, yeah. like we'll help somebody get their, their thing out the snow, for and then sure. like you said, we're like, all right, see you later. Uh, yeah. Also, if there's a, there's always a problem on a bus or train, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, jump yeah. in and help. But other yeah. than that, we are all on our own. If somebody's looking for a pizza shop, we always can find a good pizza <laughs> that's, shop. That's right? very true. That happened to me the, just the other day. I was talking about pizza, and some guy just walking by overheard the conversation. He's like, you should try this place on this corner. I was like, all right, great. You've been living here all your life and don't know what good, the good pizza is? No, I know I had my own. He had his own, oh, he had his own you, opinion. <laughs> I was giving my own opinions about pizza, and he actually came in and supported my choice. Oh. So it was, uh, I, got, I could shout it out. <laughs> but I don't Go know. ahead if you yeah, want. It was, it was Mama's Two up on 104. Oh, Mama's Two. Very good? good. It's very good pizza. Okay. Yeah. So now with, with you in, in, in the screenwriting, acting, and editing, you said you do it with your brother. How difficult was it to break in? Well, it's, it's um, I guess it's funny because, yeah, the first movie we uh, that we made was just kind of, it was about our childhood, you know, d- growing up, you know, the difficulties with uh, divorce and, and our father doing things that, at first, you thought were nice, but then with distance, you realize, oh, that's kind of messed up. Was that Daddy Long Legs? Yes, yeah, okay. Daddy Long Legs, exactly. And so you make that, and then you th- it, it gets out there, and there's a certain level of, like, it, it wins some awards, and you think something's going to happen, and then it doesn't, you know? So you just kind of go through, and then the next thing was somebody just approached us about, he had been making a documentary about this basketball player, Lenny Cook, 
and he was the greatest. You know, he was like LeBron before LeBron. Oh, I, saw that, I saw that though. You did? Okay, yeah. It so was we on, uh, Showtime. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Showtime. So we made that. Oh, you made that? Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. You don't let it cook. You yeah. know, from Atlantic City. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it, so he came to us with all these tapes, mm -hmm. and I'm watching these tapes, and I'm like, this is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, do you have anything other than basketball? Because it can't just be about basketball. And so then he starts showing me all these other tapes about like all the downtime in between all of the, the games. And it was like mind blowing. Mm -hmm. And the, the story was so interesting because when we finally met up with Lenny 10 years, 12 years later, um, we were just like, well, what was it? What was it? And then we realized that there was this agent who offered him all this money and then he took the money because he had to. And it was a whole situation where everybody was taking and pulling him. And you realize, wow, it doesn't need to be this crazy, tragic event. It could all be all these small things that add up to not making it in the league. And mm -hmm. then you realize how hard it is to even just be the guy on the 15th man. Mm -hmm. So it just, and I love basketball, you know, so that made, the, that made perfect sense. And that was just supposed to be a quick thing. And then it was like this four year long process. No, it was great. I just wish it, that story, I wish the community would have grabbed Lenny. You know, because oh, yeah. at that time, uh, for people that don't know, Lenny Cook is from Atlantic City basketball play. He he would have been in the league the same time LeBron oh. and Melo was Mello, in there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, there's games where he, he's busting Melo and LeBron's ass, and, yes. and they respected him. Um, but while they were working and practicing, you know, Melo, he, you know, Lenny fell victim of New York City club life mm -hmm. and, and was out every night and partying and, and didn't. It was coming to him too easy. Basketball yes. was too easy for him. And he yes. didn't have to practice like a lot of people. And he fell victim to it. And very, very sad because he could have been a millionaire, oh billionaire. And now I think he's, uh, I think he sells cars. At, at, he, he has a couple of hustles, but yeah. still a good friend of mine. Shout out to Lenny Cook. He's, no, he's great. And, and, and the thing is, and he uses his story to tell kids on yep. like what to avoid. Correct. And I think it's, it means so much coming from him. And the fact that he's able to even do that being at the position where he was right. is so enormous, mm -hmm. you know, because he knows that if I had it at the top and I lost it, I can at least take that and use it for other people Correct. to show them. And he's he's the best, you know? Good guy. And it, it really was just an eye-opening thing. And I remember after finishing it and showing it to him, just this, like, he gave me this hug that I'll never forget to this day. It was so deep because the whole point of the movie was everybody was pushing to, like, to to say the story from other people's points of view. Okay, let's use this interview. Let's use this talking about Lenny and why he didn't make it. And there was this, we pushed to say, no, it has to be from him. Right. We have to tell it from his point of view, and we don't want other people telling us why this happened. I want to hear from right. him why it happened. Right. And that's the, the most important thing. So I think when he saw that, he felt that. And, yeah, I don't know, it was, it was a very important movie for me. But just because it was... It was a documentary, but it was also coming from this place of you have to tell a story also, you know? So there was a lot of, like, um, connection there. But. You know, you uh, you did Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. Did you expect that movie to, 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 to have the cultural impact and do the numbers it did? I, it's funny because, like, n yes and no. Whenever you're making something, you think that everybody wants to see it. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just figure it's an itch that you're scratching that everybody wants scratched. So... Like with Daddy Longlegs, I thought this thing was going to be on like TBS. You know, it was going to be like the family movie of the night, mm -hmm. but it wasn't. So with Uncut Gems, we thought, okay, yeah, this is interesting and fun to us. And it was just amazing when it did connect and, and you saw everybody reacting and feeling the things that way. It was crazy. But um, it's it was unexpected in a lot of ways, but at the same time, you're, you just kind of have to follow your your feelings about it. So. Did you know Adam? Like, you know, they always say Adam Sandler has this circle. Yes. And he only rocks with his circle. Yeah. And he puts all his circle in his movies. And did, did you know him? Or? Well, no, it's, it's, we didn't know him. Okay. But when, but we wanted him to play the part from when we first wrote it, but we didn't know him. And, but once you do get to know him and you get close, he's the greatest. You yeah, know, yeah, he's yeah. just such a warm, amazing person. Mm -hmm. And it is true. Like, you just can't believe it. Like, and somebody stops him on the street. He gives him time. Doesn't matter who it is. And yeah, he's great. That's crazy though, because you know you see that movie and you think that's an Adam Sandler movie. Yeah. You don't think that's a, a Softy brother yeah. movie? What did I say? A softy. Softy. I, it's funny because I always got I always got Softy. <laughs> softy. Because like early on, because I I grew up on in Queens in the Upper West Side. Where in Queens? Uh, Forest Hills. Okay. And so it was like there, and then and then Upper West Side. But the the Queens accent was always Softy. Softy, Mr. Yeah. Softy. Well, high school did you go to? <laughs> so it, um, I went to Columbia Prep, Columbia in the City. In high school? Yeah, high school. Oh wow. 
I was going to ask you with uh, Judy Bloom's movie, Are You There Yet, God? It's yeah. me. Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. <laughs> Ain't no Are You There Yet. I'm no, not. No, 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 but that says it. It's, Ice you... Cube would be in that one. <laughs> <laughs> but that, what that's, that's all we there yet. <laughs> yeah, 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 but it's funny because it's like you're expecting, the, the, the way that title reads is you're expecting God to intervene. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Dude, come on. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like I'm dealing with a lot of shit right, right. now. <laughs> Are you there yet? She don't even know if he's, he or she is really there. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, were you a Judy Blume fan growing up as a kid? Or? Um, I actually wasn't. You and was it's not. funny because I started reading it as an adult. And it was because uh, Ronnie Bronstein, who we work with, he said, you should read the Fudge books because you have two boys. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I got to read because two boys, the older brother, the younger brother comes in and he's he's causing all these problems for the older brother. And, I was, and as I was reading it, I could see how much my older son Cosmo could relate to it. And it totally opened my mind as a father in how you can relate to your kids. Cause the way that um, Judy writes these characters is so effortless yeah. and it's so just like, you can't even imagine how she's tapping into these psyches of kids. And so as a parent, it was this gateway into understanding that I didn't have. And I thought that was an amazing thing. So it's funny cause I came to it as a, as an adult, but people who come to her as a kid and read it, they have the same feeling where it's like, Oh my God, she's tapping into this, Right. unspoken thing that I'm feeling and it gives voice to those emotions so it works both ways you know I think this movie is a classic uh, I think it's just as classic as the book I was a little bit disappointed at uh, the box office numbers yeah. you know because I'm just like well where's the disconnect yeah yeah and then I read that they said nothing but old white women came to see it older white women yeah which is like, what <laughs> <laughs> it's insane it's funny because it's like yeah for me it's it should be like uh, yeah I, I can't imagine why Everybody isn't it's going a feel to feel-good family movie. Exactly. And it's yeah. like, why aren't like 13-year-olds um, going or just kids or just people interested in, mm -hmm. in different points of view? Fathers you know? taking their daughters. Exactly. Because yeah. that for me was like, I don't have a daughter. and But having the experience of watching and reading this book, you know, um, watching the movie and then reading the book, it was it was eye-opening to me to know that this is what people go through. And it was right. al it's also funny. Yeah. You know, so it's just like, I don't know. It's uh, I, I I'm convinced though that the... The word of mouth and everything, everybody who sees it loves it. So it's, I think it's the kind of thing where, yeah, we'll see. It should. I, I think so. And Mother's Day weekend is coming up. And I was exactly. thinking too, because uh, I read something where they was like, you know, the audience that went to see it wasn't diverse, diverse. Yeah. And I was like, that's interesting because the movie is. Yes, yes. Like the, without without trying, like For I sure. hate overly woke shit. Yeah, I can't yeah. stand it. But it's like it's diverse without even trying. Well, it, well, because because it's it's just how life is. That's right. Well, and that's the thing is, it's like when you look around it's everything is mixed mm -hmm. so that's just how it is mm -hmm. and it's not forcing it down mm -hmm. in any way and i think that's the the beauty of it and I, I i think maybe what it is is maybe people don't know that but um about the movie mm -hmm. but it's an important part of it you know just to the way that it shows everything but and you're doing a movie with uh meg the Stallion? um yes yes what kind of movie it's uh, well right now it's it's i can't really talk too much about it okay. just because it's like in the in the process but um yeah, so it's with Sandler and all that stuff. So really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like she got like a major role. Well, it's a, it, it's. He a, said he it, can't it, talk yeah. about it, right? <laughs> 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 a major role. I can't talk about it. It's a music. I can't oh, yeah, talk say the writer strike. The writer yeah, strike. Yeah. Can't talk about nothing. Yeah. The How is the writer strike affecting you? Well, the right the, look the 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 strike thing is 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 intense because it's like you see what happened is like all of a sudden the industry changed enormously. You know, everything got bigger and one thing stayed the same, you know, for the writers. So you can't, you can't change so much as an industry and then not change how you compensate the people who are making that same work. You know, right. it just, it, to me, it makes, it's just common sense. You know, if, if the world changes, you adapt and that's kind of what has to happen here. And it, it's hopefully everybody will come together and figure that out. But it is, it is, it's an intense situation. There's well, no doubt about it. I don't understand how Hollywood does not give the writers everything they want. Well, there is nothing. There is nothing moves yeah, no, without writers. Well, that that's the thing. That's the thing that's crazy. Is it's like when you actually see the side by side, you're just like, oh, these. This is not unreasonable. Yeah. you know, and it's just yeah. like, wow. And you're not even going to respond to some of this stuff. So it's. I'm confident that like it's going to work itself out because you're right. It nothing moves forward without it. So. Um, it's it's just a matter of yeah. I don't know how long I, it's gonna take. I don't know if I'm confident because I think that Hollywood's gonna use this time to experiment. Because there's one thing in the because I'm part of the writers guild. There's yeah. one thing in there that they 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 
rejected that scared me. That is, I don't I didn't you even know what I'm talking about. Yes, the AI the thing. Cha- yeah. Which is just like, come on. Yes. That's in, that's scary. Yes. That yes. is scary. You're right. And I hope that they don't go that route. That's but right. you're right. It's possible. Writers basically put in there that they they don't that like chat GTP AI can't write uh stuff. I agree. Well and that no and they, the, Hollywood was like, nope. The thing just- that and I don't know if you there is like there's been all these things where they actually can take previous scripts of a specific genre or a specific thing and just feed those into the into the engine and then it'll spit out something. And it's funny because it it's all derivative of other stuff, but that's the thing that's scary is it's 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 basically takes copyright and throws it out the window because there's no way to trace it, which is insane. Yeah, now but, it might end up being one or two writers on these projects, on these sitcoms and, the, and stuff. Yeah. Cuz if I already got the formula, right? You're right. I already got the formula that's, for something. I'll put it in chat GPT and give it to one or two people. That's Let's scary. Touch ups, like it's ugh. it's funny because it's like this. It's not funny, but this whole thing with uh, AI, I it's so I can't even con- I can't even like put it into perspective what actually is going to happen with Mutually assured it. destruction. It's great the fact that people can fully go forward with something knowing the end result is crazy. You know. And I guess it's it's I guess it's as tale as age was like old as time, right? Mm-hmm. You look at um I, I'm just it's in my head because I was in the the Oppenheimer movie. You you know what's going to happen when you start messing with atoms and and the nuclear. Mm-hmm. It's like, but you still go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. It's something in humanity. I don't know what that is or what that says about us. Very but, scary. Yeah. Question: um, What is the difference between putting out mo- uh, movies for streaming services versus putting them out in theaters? What's more profitable? Um. Well, it's I guess it, it it's changed because there used to be when you put it in theaters, there's a very specific back end that happens, you know, and then it's just that that isn't quite there isn't it's a different back kind of back end with streamers, so you can't really it's not a one to one. Um so but then again it's like if but if people don't go to the movies or go to the theaters, then that doesn't mean anything. So it's it's just a totally different landscape. Mm-hmm. And I think because of that new thing that came out, which is streaming you know, and now that it's more and more available and in people's homes, you you have to figure out a way to to make it more equal. You know, mm-hmm. what's been your favorite movie you've done? Um, huh, that's a tough one. Um, that's a tough one. <laughs> I guess the most the most um, intense emotionally was probably Daddy Long Legs, really? just because it was it was dealing with a lot of stuff that I kind of just ignored Mm -hmm. and just like childhood trauma and all that stuff you kind of have to you don't in order to get forward and move on with your life you don't look back you know and and facing it head on is intense and that's just what that was and and it's it's veiled and there's a lot of stuff in there that's made up and but the core of it is the 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 feelings and emotions are there and just dealing with that is was hard had you unpacked it before Writing that? E, I had started the process. Gotcha. I think I'm still unpacking. Gotcha. It's a pretty big suitcase. Gotcha. So I'm, I'm unpacking that as we still. And is but, there anything that you went out for that you didn't get that you um, wish you would have got? Uh, or on the reverse, there was something that you turned down and was like, damn, I shouldn't have turned that down. Right now, no. Mm-hmm. You know, right now, no, because um, it's it's like it just with acting, you know, something that I find really interesting about acting is there's certain things that I can get to explore that I wouldn't normally explore gotcha. with my own stuff. And with this movie in particular, you know, mm-hmm. Margaret, nobody ever looks at me and says, oh, you would be a great father. Mm-hmm. You know, I am a father. You are, you know? Even though you are one. I am a father. I'm, I have, I have, and I'm, I have a wife and I deal with all these problems. And so far, some things have, have, have bled into the work a little bit, but I never had a chance to fully explore a lot of those things. And this movie gave me that opportunity. So I can see that in uh, like in acting, I can I can kind of dip in and and deal with and and work through a lot of stuff too. So I'm I have I've had the ability, luckily, to to do that, and so I don't really have any regrets really there. But um, and I've been ha- happy to be able to explore a lot of things. So is it, is it tough being an, an actor and 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 taking direction from another director? Um, sometimes you direct as well. Yeah, sometimes it can be sometimes, but I try to not allow it to get in my head. But you overthink it? Yeah, because sometimes you're thinking about not yourself. Mm. You're thinking about other people and how you desperately want to affect that. And you can't. 
So, but you can as an actor. Mm -hmm. That's the thing is if you affect your performance in a specific way, if everybody's listening, which is what the, when it's great, if everybody's listening, they can't react any other way, you know? So you're, gotcha. you can kind of affect the performance just by being in it with all the other actors, which is an amazing experience. And it, but yes, there's sometimes, but I, I, I try not to let it get in my head where it's like, okay, I'm not going to even bother myself with the things that would normally affect me as a director. And I'm just going to dive into these characters and who's around me. Mm -hmm. And that's great. And I do find it really interesting to see and hear the, the ways that other people work because that will inevitably seep into how you do things. And, and it's exciting, you know? I've had the ability to work with a lot of great directors, so. And you're in the Oppenheimer movie coming up, right? Yeah, yeah. That's going to be interesting. I was just having a conversation about him yesterday because we were talking about him in reference to a lot of these fathers of AI. Yes. You know what I mean? Interesting. Because it's kind of the same thing, yeah, right? Yeah. These people created this weapon, mm -hmm. this nuclear weapon, and still yes. put it out knowing what the consequences yes. could be. It's crazy. You know? And th that, was, that, it, it, that was another thing where when we started making it, it was like, okay, this is from the, from the 40s, and it's so from a different time. And then right as we, like, we're literally in the middle of the desert doing the test of this bomb and all this stuff with Russia and Ukraine starts coming down. And it was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Like, it, 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 there's something about period movies where when you start dredging up stuff from the past, it inevitably, like, uh, shifts the way the consciousness is talking about stuff. And it comes out again. I don't know. It's crazy. It shows you how history can repeat itself. Exactly. And that's why it's it's so important to look at back and learn about it. Because if you don't understand how it started and what happened, you can't fix it. You know? Did you get to kick it with Robert Downey at all? I did. Yes, I did. That was I. I it was so funny because like I I have a crazy Hungarian, I like a thick Hungarian accent in the movie, mm -hmm. and I was so nervous about it. Mm -hmm. So um, how do you practice that accent? It was. So so Chris had sent me a bunch of his interviews and I just listened to them. I would ride my bike listening to this guy talk and the biggest hurdle was just saying, you know what? If it sounds stupid, it sounds stupid. I don't care. I'm just going to do it. And let me hear, let me hear something. Right I can't do it. I literally, it's, it's funny because I can't <laughs> actually go back into it. I need to listen to him again to like springboard me into it. Gotcha. They so, used AI, tell the truth. No, no, yeah, exactly. I, I just opened my mouth. It was like a cartoon. You know how the mouth just... Uh, but it was, yeah, no, it was a great... That was a great experience because it was the first time I'd ever shot on a scene on IMAX. And that camera is loud. Wow. And so I mean, it was literally the first scene. He uh, Downey is next to me and I didn't know what was happening. And all of a sudden the camera starts going and it's like... <laughs> so loud. I was like, oh my God. I turn around. I'm like, something's broken. Somebody's got to fix it. And he's just like, it's fine. It's fine. And he has a whole process. It's amazing. That's wow. Right. Well, we appreciate you stopping through. Yeah, yeah. man. What's next for y'all? Um, right now, it's you know we're just kind of um, the the next thing that's coming out is Oppenheimer, and then there's the the TV show that I worked on um, that comes out this year. You know, uh, oh, it's already shot. Yeah, it's finished. You oh, know, okay. the, the the curse. So you made it. Yeah, you made it right before the screen. Yeah, we finished it over. Um, it was a while ago. Okay. Now we're, we've just been editing, and now we're done editing. So. But um, that was with Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone. So that'll okay. be that'll be crazy. <laughs> but what network? Um, it's uh, Paramount and Showtime. Okay. Okay. So. Well, thank you, Benny Safty, for joining us. Did I yeah. say it right? And make yeah, sure you that go was see. It. All right. All I, I, I'll God. take any pronunciation. Any pronunciation. Really. <laughs> That's right. Make sure you go see All You Day God. It's me, Margaret. Man. Let's do it this weekend. All righty. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.